episode, which is the last episode of this anime, we see Nima completely shocked as the wounded, injured, and those who lost their lives are being transported to that location. Meanwhile, the commander's sister was crying because the scene was very gruesome. They were killing them mercilessly. Everyone was risking their lives in the fight. Nima speaks to herself and says, This is not like the battles I've seen from behind the screen. Some of those who were with us just hours ago are now gone, counted among the dead. It's very sad. Then Nima gets angry and screams, This is all my fault. This is the result of my decisions. Then Shinki comes to her along with the prince, and the prince says to Shinki, Come on, Shinki, prepare the lightning immediately. Then he shouts and says, Oh, kobolds, prepare yourselves, cover your eyes and ears. They prepare for the big and deadly lightning, striking all the soldiers present. Then they quickly withdraw from the battlefield before the others wake up. The purpose of this battle was to reach safety while minimizing the attack of the eradication group as much as possible. After an hour of walking, they finally arrive, and the commander welcomes them with everyone around her. She asks them where the captured adventurers are. The prince tells her we left them behind. They'll realize as soon as they wake up, the Lord of Beasts will be handed over for investigation. Then he informs her about the casualties, that 14 members of the group died, with 11 severely injured, either petrified or mutilated in other ways. The healers did everything they could, but it seems that the restoration was very difficult. Nima becomes very sad and says, it's my fault. I made a mistake. Then she cries and one of the dogs cries too, saying our leader sacrificed himself to save me. If only I had moved faster, I could have saved him. Nima cries a lot and remembers the commander's words. You must do what falls on your shoulders. After that, she speaks to them and says, you must stop crying. This is an insult to those who have fallen. The dog shouts loudly, all of this is because of you. Nima bows her head and says, yes, I allowed these losses to happen, which means I cannot regret it. So I won't let anyone tarnish their memory anymore. The other person says, if you won't allow us to mourn for the fathers and friends we lost. Nima shakes her head and says, I didn't say that. I just told you to stop feeling sorry for yourselves. Do you think it was right for them to die instead of you? They were the ones who should have survived. This selfish thinking was what they fought against. They risked their lives for you, young ones, for a happy, noble, independent life forever. They sacrificed themselves for you, so you must live strong, so their sacrifice won't be in vain. If you want to despise me, go ahead, but I will become strong, risking my life to save you all. Then she remembers Shinki and says, as soon as Shinki confesses to being his master, it falls on me to protect and lead the spirits. When I invited the kobolds to the Shana project, I also had to protect them. I chose the path of the ruler, a path full of monsters and challenges. But for this very reason, I cannot let their lives go in vain. I will save the remaining kobolds no matter the cost. Then Spika comes beside Nima and says, I will also become stronger. I will protect this herd with Nima. Finally, the commander speaks and says, sadness won't bring back those we've lost. We must sail the ship of the future they've paved for us. As for Nima, I brought her here, and if you all will harbor hatred towards her, then I'll bear that hatred with her. She then turns to Nima, approaches her and says, my little lady, lead us to peace, please. The stars still tell me that you are our only savior after Allah. Nima is surprised by her words and says confidently, if you're pleased with me, then I'm satisfied. The other person tells her, yes, we've overcome countless punishments so far because of you. Nima says, the road won't be long and difficult in the end. The other person reassures her, put your trust in Allah and he will never let us down. Nima then asks them, are you all content? They remain silent for a very short while and then their commander speaks. I have no objection as the leader of the healers. Let me tell you, you're the best. You care about us a lot. As for those we've lost, their time was destined. Whether they die now or later doesn't matter. What matters is that we resist until the end. We won't die as prey, but as fighters, victorious or defeated, but we'll resist until our last breath. That's our motto. We are the hunters, and I believe that's all right. Then Lady Moa speaks up saying, I will continue until the end too. Everyone agrees and Nima will lead them to the end. After everyone applauded her, Nima discussed with everyone where they would go after leaving this place. They had decided to send the kobolds to Mount Latimol, located on the borders of the Mioga region in the southwest. As for those who fell in battle, they entrusted them temporarily to the forest guardian. At sunset, Prince Will orders them to return to their place. At that moment, Cecily comes to Nima and tells her that her younger sister wants to stay with them. But she is still weak. She will train during their journey, so she wants Nima to help her if she needs anything. Nima agreed to take her with them because her sister needs to live among humans and learn social behavior as well. Spika is delighted with this news 
and Cecily asks Nima to give her a name now that she has matured this way. Nima replied that Hanley, the herd leader, is usually the one who names everyone here. Cecily tells her that her little sister is not a monster, so she won't be associated with her unless Nima names her. This made Nima think for a moment, as this little one is a member of the Star Wolf tribe, so she chose the name star, which is Spica, the star of spring that heralds the end of harsh winter. Spica is very happy with this name as she loved it a lot. Then these two little ones rush to Nima, and she doesn't understand what they want from her. Cecily tells her that they want her to name them as well. Nima tells her that they will be associated with her if she names them. Cecily says she would be very grateful if Nima gave them names, as she is curious to see how they will grow. So Nima gave them the names Sego and Rexy. When she gave them their names, marks appeared on their foreheads, and the dogs were very happy about this. They continued playing with Nima. After that, Prince Will speaks, saying that they must return now as Ralph has contacted them. The eradication team is about to set up their camp. Will and Nima move to execute their plan, while Cecily stays with the rest of the team. Seekly asks them to take care of themselves, and Nima tells her that they will meet again with everyone once they finish their work. Then Nima bids farewell to her friend Spica for a short while, as she has to wait for her. Then Nima, Will, and Shinki arrive at the palace, where Shinki informs her that they will spend the night in Galia and depart tomorrow afternoon. They will use instant teleportation magic at Dar Shelly to reach Fubii, but this depends on Hilren's report. Hilren meets them, welcomes them, and informs them that he has brought the evidence they discussed, including request receipts, delivery confirmations, and usage logs. He found additional request receipts but couldn't find the goods anywhere. There are also signs of tampering in the usage logs. Nima is shocked, because this means that the invoices are fabricated, implicating merchants and some knights. Will speaks, saying they will conduct an investigation based on this. He will now request agents from the capital immediately. Nima asks if he will arrest them himself, and Will replies that he doesn't want to waste too much time here. There's more to the story, and someone else besides the leader should be caught. However, he wants to review the details first. Ralph enters at that moment and Nima is very happy to see him. Ralph informs them that they managed to avoid losses, as everyone has already gathered for the honor ceremony. Ralph says everyone is gathered for the honor ceremony, and tonight we will all go to the forest. Nima is astonished to see all these people and a lot of delicious food. Ralph tells her not to isolate herself and to stay close to him and Will. The old man speaks, saying he is confident that the knights will be very happy to have them here. Will expresses his joy that the eradication operation succeeded and encourages them to continue working well for their kingdom. He asks Shinki to keep a close watch on the old man during this period. Nima tells him that if he tries to escape, he has permission to apprehend him. Ralph informs her that he will go treat some people so she should stay with Will. In that case, he believes they can go talk to the Red Hallet. They see them going to the Knights and thanking them. Will says, I heard you did an impressive job on this mission. The commander said to him, no need for thanks. It's because of you that we didn't suffer many losses on our side. I see Nima with this sword, then she remembers during the war when the commander killed many kobolds. Then Lax speaks with Nima, saying he is from the Snow Bear tribe, and he is honored to meet the Great Wind Beast. Lak then asks her about her name. She responds that she is the second daughter of Dyland. Lak replies, I'm not good at good behavior or fancy talk that humans are known for, so I apologize to you. Nima replies, I understand that there are cultural differences, and Lacey asks her about the great beast. She tells him that she and Lars are friends, which surprises Lack. He asks, is the sacred beast your friend? You're very strange since I greeted the beast. I think I'll go get some food. Then Nima asks if he wants to come with her, and Lack agrees and goes with her, wondering what he will eat. Lack then tells Will that he will go to eat with Nima. Will asks about his promise to Ralph, and Nima replies that he will also go to him. Will talks with the rest of the knights, asking if they will come with him. It seems she has become quite attached to Lack. The commander says that Lack is very happy because he loves children. But children are always afraid of him. After that, Nima said to Lack, can I touch your ears? Lack agrees and Nima touches him saying, the lower part is smooth, but it has a fluffy and joyful texture, while the upper part is taut but has a good feel. Nima sees many children in the place talking to Bulger, but he becomes upset with her and asks, what do you want from me? Don't hinder my work. Nima tells him that she won't hinder his work, and sees that he works diligently. Bulgar tells her that it's all for survival, and when he becomes stronger, he will prove that to her by being as strong as his father and able to protect everyone. Then their leader calls him to take the dishes, so Bulgar quickly gets up and goes to take them. We see Lack carrying Nima and walking with her, telling her that she doesn't resemble the nobles. Nima tells him that she hears that a lot. Then Nima reaches her family and her sister Karna rushes to her, hugs her, and tells her how much she missed her, and asks what she was doing without her. 
Then we see everyone sitting down and eating, and Nima tells them that the food is very delicious. She asks Nox, Gracia, and Haku if they want more food. Her sister tells her that she has already formed a pact with the monsters, and she is very loved by the Divine Creator. Nima tells Lima that she has to study a lot, because her current position has many responsibilities, and she doesn't want to burden her family just because she's young. She doesn't want to live and tarnish their name with shame. Her sister hugs her, and Nima is touched by that. Then Lak tells her that she can rely on him if she ever gets into trouble, even though he's only good at fighting. Nima thanks Lima for that and tells them that Lak is a good person, hoping to make people understand that some monsters can be kind and non-harmful. She is sure that Lak and the leader of the fighters will understand her well. The scene then transitions to Nima sleeping in her bed. Then we see Sol standing in front of her balcony, waking her up from her sleep. Nime gets up and goes to him, asking him what he's doing in Lini's. Sol tells her that it's nothing important, but if she can, he'd like to show her a little of this world. Sol then takes her and flies with her, making Naima very happy about it. They head north, and Sol tells her that this world is full of beautiful things, but humans are foolish because they don't see them. Nima agrees with him, saying that humans are reckless and weak, but they are sincere and pure, and other living beings come in many types, all just trying to survive. Then Nima tells Sol that she loves this world, loves everyone and everything here, and pledges in her name, Kenvertima Osfai, to make the Shiana project successful and make this place a place where everyone can unite within this light. With this happy ending, this episode of this anime ends, and along with it, this season also ends. To follow more anime, please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell button to receive all new updates.